Okay, so I've been a big Last of Us fan ever since it came out for PS3. The very beginning of the PS3 life cycle, pretty much, I've been playing this game. So I'm a huge fan of this series. And so I also plan on doing a 100% walkthrough for this game when it comes out. But recently, PlayStation published new footage of The Last of Us. So I want to watch this video and then I'm going to end up pausing the video and giving my thoughts about it. I'm not trying to make a video where I just re react to the video. I want to actually like give my thoughts about this video because like I said, I'm a huge fan of this series. So let's, let's just get into it. Under here. What the gameplay needs to do is immerse you in the world give you as many interesting actions to survive in this world and overcome obstacles and obstacles could be infected. Okay, so let's go back a little bit here. So this is one new feature that I actually like. Oh, Ellie now is able to crawl under stuff and she's even able to go prone in the grass as well as under vehicles. So I think this is going to be an interesting new mechanic. Obstacles and obstacles could be infected. It could be other people. It could just be the environment. It could be rushing water. Anything that could happen in this post-apocalyptic world. Are you clean? Yeah. But more than anything, it needs to put you in Ellie's shoes. That you're experiencing what Ellie's experiencing, making you feel what she feels. Because the more we do that, the more the emotional beats of the story work for us. And the more they work for us in this very unique way that only works in video games. The gameplay philosophy of The Last of Us Part Two is putting you in the shoes of Ellie and everything that that means. It means giving you a threat constantly as this world has. It means giving you the hard choices. Because this game takes place in such a hostile universe and our characters are pushed to do really difficult things, we want to put you in alignment with those choices. We want you to understand how hard certain decisions were for these characters because they're hard all right, so here's another thing I like. I like how The Last of Us has improved on their gore and that they aren't afraid to make the game for a mature audience because that's where I feel like a lot of game developers these days are trying to stray away from. Most game developers don't want to make a game for a mature audience because they want the game to be accessible to a wider audience of people so they can make the most profit. But Naughty Dog is staying true to keeping the game gory and, and this is one thing that I really respect about the company. Let's continue watching for you. I would say the overarching philosophy of how we approached designing the game mechanically is how can we take things to the next next level. Everything kind of comes out of the story. And how do we do it through systems? All right, so here's that new mechanic again. It's showing Ellie going prone into the grass to try and avoid being spotted. I Personally, I don't know how often I'll be using this command because I'm the type of player that likes to go in and engage in situations and try to get through an area quicker while playing on the hardest difficulty for, the, for an extra challenge. So I do think the prone mechanic will be a lot more useful in the highest difficulty, but I probably still won't be using it that much anyway, unless there's like a certain situation that is very useful to use it in. So one is you have to feel the pressure of survival. Survive by the skin of my teeth. How do I use all these, all the scrap around me? Any kind of bullet, any kind of rag, any kind of bottle of alcohol. How do we give you that sense of being a survivor in this world? She unlocked the door. Okay, I think I see what happened there. So she broke the window, hopped in through the window, grabbed the supplies, and I think that door was locked from the other side, so she unlocked it. So there's probably going to be situations like that where doors are locked and you can't get in there, and you have to find a different route to get in there to unlock it. Bloater. Ellie is very small compared to Joel and more nimble. How do we make you feel like you're not the strongest person in the room, but you still should be able to rise to the challenge and survive? You know, a fight with a bunch of people that are all bigger than you. So therefore it meant creating a okay, right there and system. See right there. Okay, so I'm pausing it right here. As you can see, Ellie dodged the arrow that was being fired at her because they implemented a new dodge mechanic to the game. So now not only can you dodge when enemies are about to melee you, but you can also dodge arrows. This is going to be a mechanic that 
I'm going to try to master. So therefore it meant creating a character and systems and mechanics that allow you to be much more nimble. And that's where we added um, a jump button. In the first game we had a clamor button, but not really jumping. And here Ellie can jump. The combat scenarios are much more vertical where Ellie can use elevation to her advantage. Prone is a huge, huge one. Prone, obviously, it means to lay flat on the ground. Uh, something so simple, again, something that in real life you'd be able to do. So now they're explaining the prone the player mechanic. have access to all their weapons, all the items, crafting, everything, while in that position. This I and like, right there. Just How Ellie can go prone and also shoot her bow and arrow. That's going to be a really stealthy way of taking out enemies. So because in The Last of Us 1, in order to stealth kill enemies like that, you would have to hide behind like a wall or an object and and sort of get them around like that. But now with the prone mechanic, you can kill enemies without being seen. That's one thing that's useful about the prone mechanic. Creates so many more emergent uh, things in gameplay. Now that we have this other state that the player could be in, which are very low to the ground, how else can we use this other than just hiding in vegetation? We're like, well, there's a lot of man-made things or different structures that have collapsed that allow just enough space for you to crawl under, which means that now, as enemies are looking for you, you can crawl under things and hide, and it's just one more way to assess your environment and use it to Ellie's advantage. Now, because you can hide under things, we gave the enemies, we made them smarter and gave them the ability to look under things. So while you might hide somewhere and be safe for a while, eventually they're gonna start looking under stuff, and if you're hiding under a truck and they spot you, they're gonna yank you out and then try to kill you. He wasn't even fighting back. Is a big one because now with dodge, anytime you're in a you're in a a scuffle, you have a chance to get away. You have a chance to counterattack. It lets escape be an option as well. Sometimes you just got to run, and that is another part of this world, which is sometimes the threat is so overpowering that you just have to get away. When you are partially hidden, or you're like you're in grass, that means people from afar can't see you, but people from closer can kind of see you. They will eventually acquire you. You're not completely hidden when you're in grass. She went into the grass. Watch yourself. And it makes you as a player become much more aware of your surroundings. Jump, prone, dodge, you know, all these things feed into both exploration and uh, combat because it lets us expand the space. If the size of spaces can be bigger, the intricacy of spaces can be more complex, and it still works exactly as you would expect. So when it came to our level design, we really wanted to challenge ourselves to make a world that really felt like a real space as much as we possibly could and didn't feel like a series of combat encounters and exploration spaces and then combat encounters that felt like a, a hall of horrors or something. Um, All right, so I'm pausing here because I like what they did with the bow, how they've now added a cross here for it. But something that really felt like a space that you could explore that seemed like a legitimate uh, urban environment. And that pushed us to make our level design uh, even more open than it was in the first game, which for us at the time was uh, was pretty open. In this game, we've gone so far in making the level design open uh, that there are actually entire story moments, entire combat encounters, like full scripted sequences that you may completely miss. And there are things that we feel like, even though a portion of our player base may never see these things, uh, the fact that when you do encounter them, you feel like you discovered them, it lends them this charm and this magic that I think is unique to games that, you know, this, this happened to me because of what I did and what the place I explored to. This area looks familiar. Crafting is very much about a payoff to exploration, meaning that when you enter new spaces, you want to look around for supplies. You want to open drawers and cabinets um, and look for... Unless you're playing on ground ...different board. things that will allow you to craft Either items that can help you heal, items that can help you attack multiple enemies at once, such as the Molotov um, or the landmine that Ellie can craft. Items that can help augment your weapons, like the silencer for her pistol, um, or craft new kinds of ammo. 
It also gives us tons of interesting gameplay choices and overlaps that you can do in any moment and in, in on the fly. We try to be a game that wants you to make a lot of different decisions in combat as possible. And the way that we've expanded the recipe roster and all of the recipes and how they interact with each other is carefully chosen for the different ingredients and making sure that you always have these interesting decisions to make. We put a much stronger emphasis on the importance of the choices you make in the long term for your character. It'll be useful. Through the weapon upgrade system, through the player upgrade system, there aren't enough resources in a single playthrough to fully upgrade your character. The choices that you make, you're going to have to live with. And we wanted to make sure that all of the choices that you made had a really noticeable and tangible effect on the way that you play. I think they've improved the UI, though. I, I, like, I like the UI a lot better. You feel a greater kinship with Ellie because you are living with decisions that you've already made. Like, you, you are continuing this through line of her journey through this world. Uh, and the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is influenced by that in a way that we haven't before. The realization that your choices have these long-term consequences is very much like the nature of the, the narrative of the game. Uh, and I'm happy that the mechanics are supporting that. Apparently, The Last of Us 2 is having bad reputation because of the story leak. But honestly, with my final thoughts about the game, I buy video games to have fun. So I could care less if the story in this game is worse than the story in the first game. Because the first game was borderline perfect for everything. Story, music, gameplay, just everything about the first game was pretty much a perfect experience. So I think it's going to be hard for any developer to top what they did with that first game. But as long as the gameplay, which does look to be improved, um, the music has to be as good as the first one. If they didn't ruin the music, that's another thing that's going to get me to buy it. The atmosphere of the game is another reason why I like The Last of Us. So I like The Last of Us for many reasons. And honestly, the story is probably low on the list of why I like The Last of Us. I like the first one because of the gameplay with its, with its dark atmosphere and straight up amazing soundtrack. Like everything in the first game just worked so well together and i'm hoping to get that with the last of us part two aside from maybe the story being worse but i'm still looking forward to the game and i'm definitely doing a 100 percent wadu for it so thanks for watching guys and see you in the next video